Hey, it's John and Mike, BrewDashDudes.com. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a comparison video. We finally got into base malts. This is a comparison video between a beer brewed with American two-row pale malt, or just two-row malt, and Maris Sauter, English pale malt, yes? Yes, sir. Crisp Maris Sauter. Crisp from the crisp. Malt and this is raw American. Oh, tomato. raw. My favorite. Pale malt. Mostly because, yep. yeah, I like saying the word. Yep. Anyway, okay, so what are we going to do today? We're going to uh, maybe look at them. Taste and compare. Taste we're going to look and compare. And compare. So yeah. this is something I want to do for a really long, long time. time. Is it worth it to use Maris Otter all the time? Is there, What's ah. the application between the two? The only way to really know is to taste them side by side for a change rather than you know, you sort of get, you think you get, for me at least, you think you'd get used to wow. using American Two Row in, in these beers or Maris Otter occasionally in those beers, that you'd get a sense of what the two taste like separately. But um, but often you've got these other grains in those uh, beers absolutely. too. You're just trying to, you so the best way to do to it is with. to smash beer these guys um, and side by side, fermented the same time with the same yeast. So the basic recipe here is um, five pounds of either raw two row or Chris Maris Otter. Uh, I did a step mash, 149, 154, and then 168 mash out, going for ultimate fermentability. These guys started off at about 1054. They finished at about 1010. Um, and both of them saw, because I had to, you know, to somehow figure it out, both of them saw um, essentially what it equates to an ounce of East Kent Goldings um, for 60 minutes and then nothing else because I wanted to make sure any other flavor profile was masked by hops or whatever. Um, no aroma hops, things like that. And uh, mainly because I had it, I wanted to be as clean as I could with the yeast as well. Um, I know that sometimes USO5 can throw a little bit of peach if you're not careful, and I've never really had a problem with that, <laughs> but it can. So I didn't use that. What did you use? What I used for this, because the basement's been really cool, it's still mm -hmm. wintertime here, I used uh, W3470, the Weinstefaner yeah. lager strain, to try to keep it as clean <laughs> as I could get it. Picking now, um, I'm not running uh, the beer cam on the side tonight because the color of these two beers are really... Closer to closer than you'd think they would yeah. be. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna get. I'm gonna have a genuine camera shot, and I will hopefully put it in somewhere right about here, um, so you can get a better look on a white background of what these two beers look like side by side. Yeah. Um, if I were to say, I would say the Maris Otter is a just a tad. A it's a tad darker, tad but you darker. know, um, American Two Row mm. being about 1.8 and crisp, Maris Otter being about three to four love depend you know yeah um I, I guess i was expecting it to be a little darker but it's <laughs> nope. actually nope. so for me on the first score if i didn't have them side by side i don't think color wise for me it Much makes difference. a very big difference mm, no so um do you know anything difference on the uh, aroma profile yeah i think the uh <laughs> the uh hop uh, aroma is, is stronger on the raw side the um the Maris Otter, actually, there's more of a, a malt uh, aroma on it, I'm getting. Yep. Um, yeah, it's just, and it, we're getting more of the, the wine stefiner um, yeast on the aroma, too. Um, this seems yeah, to this be more of a combination of <clears throat> a little bit of hops, a lot of malt, yeah. and, and maybe a little bit of the yeast. It is interesting that the wine stefiner yeast is definitely a, a touch of, like, Lager sulfurish yes, coming out yes, of there. That's what I mean. Um, for sure. Um, so maybe that wasn't the best choice, but what are you gonna do? I but mean, what I what yeah. I was what I would expect if you were to give me two row and Maris Otter is yeah. that I would expect on the Maris Otter to be to be able to noticeably pick up like a little bit more of a bready um, biscuit note. Yep. And I'm not a hundred percent sure if. My palate tonight really actually I'm getting more goes there. It's I'm, it's yeah. real but it's subtle, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean it's it's more of what I think is a malt back note on the aroma than than here. Yep. This is much more hop forward, much more of that uh, like you said, the sulfury uh, mm. note from the from the So yeast. you think that, that malt the 
that the hops stand out a little bit more yeah. in the American Chili. Yeah, yeah. I think the I think the the malt in this one is taking a big back seat and what's in its place is a lot of the hops and the and the mm. yeast uh, aroma yep. right there. Um, what about the body? Okay, so the body um, this is thinner than this. Yep. This is definitely fuller and that's where I'm getting more of the the biscuity bready thing going on. Yep. Mm in the flavor um so um this is just interesting i mean if if everything was the same mash schedule is the same fermentation yeast um not only strain but uh yep. viability um certainly this holds a lot more body um in the end product than the uh, the american two row which i i guess if i were like if you were to ask me, what do you think? You know, is the American two row going to have uh, less or more body than the English uh, pale malt? I would say the the American would probably be thinner. Yeah, so I would guess that. I mean, and it, and it is there. Mm. It's definitely, but but I don't think it's like a difference between like two and a nine. Mm -mm. I think it's more like it's within four and yeah. a six. Yes. I mean, they're it's, not wildly yes. different it's it's a note or two off that's yep. all yep it's, yeah and then um, finally then i know we're sort of getting there uh with the other comments but overall flavor wise i would expect on the flavor wise to be getting something more malty and biscuit like people rave about how luxurious mm. maris otter yeah. is but in this example i'm not really getting that i think there's definitely a little bit of a malty sweetness profile here um that isn't here, um, and I I definitely get what you're saying. The way the little bit of hops that's in here um, present themselves, mm. um, even though it's just a 60 minute edition, um, there is a little bit different character. Um, but again, it's not wildly different to me. Um, it's maybe not wildly different, but different enough that I can say, if you were to say which one is uh, Marisot, or I would choose the one to my right. I would say yes, absolutely. And you think if I gave this to you blind in opaque cups, you'd pick it up? Um, in, a, in a triangle test? I mean, we didn't do that. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but I think yep. so, yeah. Because I think that this this has all the characteristics that I would perceive is American, Yeah. and that's more English okay. to me. That's okay. for sure. Yep. Um, so for me, I think in conclusion for me, when you're using these two malts, you are generally also trying to achieve very different things, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, Right? Um, I think for me, if I was going to be making like an American pale ale or American IPA, I don't think spending the extra whatever it is, 50 cents a pound from Maris Otter would matter to me, right? Because the hops are just going to trample over it, and whether you're putting a little bit of carapils or something like that in there for interest, I just think it will all get lost. On the other side of the coin, uh, in the Maris Otter version, when you're using Maris Otter for UK-based beers, you're mm. also probably going with crystal, mm -hmm. more crystal. You're going with a fruitier fermentation with the air yeast, which then might actually make this malt seem more characterful yeah. than what you're thinking when you just had your Sierra Nevada Pale Ale the day before, yeah. right? I, yeah, don't, yeah. I don't know. So for me, I guess what I'm saying is, I don't see them wildly different, and I think that um, I've brewed some beers with Maris Otter that I thought that I felt, because um, I had a lot of other character malts, that I thought, man, this Maris Otter is probably just bringing the maltiness over the top with these other character malts, and maybe I should have just used American Two Row or done a split of the two in those beers, but then again, maybe it was just loaded character malls that were overdoing it for me in those beers could be um i don't know i could i could almost uh if someone said you can only pick one it probably wouldn't matter to me which one i picked in order to use for everything mm. uh, i think that this american two row with a touch of biscuit or victory malt in it is going to be pretty damn close to this sure. i bet i could titrate that into this yeah and you would never know the difference nope. i think it's definitely it's not just not as stunning as I thought it was going to be. I don't think this is as stunning as I thought it was going to be. There's definitely subtle, subtle differences, but I think side by side I, is how I notice them. I'm not sure on its own. If I told you, hey, try this ordinary bitter I made with this 
Crystal 60 in some victory in it, you'd mm -hmm. be like, wow, that's really great. Especially with an English ale yeast. Yeah. Well, I that's might, the thing. You know? Yeah. 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 So Give me English hops. Give me English yeah. ale yeast, you yeah. know, uh, along with what you just said, a little bit of biscuit victory yeah. with that. And you'd be like, I'd be like, yeah, I'm sure you use a truckload of Marisada in that yeah, yeah. beer. And you'd be like, no, I didn't. <laughs> the, the ultimate test would have been to do, have four beers, the exact setup, but with USO5 and like... Uh, SO4, right? Yeah. Like uh, American yeah. alias and English alias and taste the four together. Because I bet that estuary fermentation really, Accentuate. these two things sort of evolve together, right? Yeah. And these things sort of evolve together, True right? That. And so they both play to their strengths when they're together. And here, I just, the Germans are really ruining the party <laughs> here, right? So. Uh, we'll just leave it at that, right? <laughs> <laughs> the four Germans. All right. Uh, so is this going to change the way you brew, Michael? What um, do you think? Yeah, I think so. I think um, if I want to make an English beer and I don't have any, I think I almost always have some of that other stuff around. Yeah. I think I can fake it pr pretty well. Okay. I'm sure the purists out there are, are rolling their eyes and Shaking they're, gonna, their fists. they're hitting that, that un dislike. The, the dislike button. But um, I am just, they're a lot closer together for me than I thought they were going to be. Well, it's an interesting comparison that you've brewed up for us. It's uh, definitely eye opening. Um, I still think there's something there. I'm, I'm more into checking out the differences and, and understanding them. Even if they're, if you think they're closer, maybe you had an expectation for them to be, as you said, wildly different yeah. and really pale, you know, base malts. Maybe they're more similar than we expected. Yep. Yes. So um, there'll be more of these to come. Um, it's pretty laborious to try to get the two together at the same time. But I want to start comparing some of our, your other favorite base malts side by side mm. and um, and see how far those differ. So so record these in your memory because I'm not going to hold on to these for long. <laughs> i got to brew some other stuff and, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Well, we have so many hop... Um, you know, smash beers, certainly that's a data point. Hopefully, we had some yeast comparisons, which was good. Yep. Now, Mike's on to the pale malt, or at least base malt comparisons. Yep. And that should be great, too. And uh, we'll see how that process evolves. Certainly, I know how much time it goes into just, like, brewing two beers exactly the same way with just one variable different. Yep. So that you can actually bring it to the table and say, yep. all right, well... I think I have something good enough here to actually comment on, like, and actually pick apart to compare each to each other. Yep. Like when you don't have that system down, yeah, you might as well just Especially throw it all out. To be the same age, yeah. have been fermented the same yes. way. It's easy to brew something on a Tuesday and then brew the other thing on a Saturday. Yep. But you, you know, gotta brew then, on the same day. Yeah, you gotta. Yeah, Could be that ready way on the to, same. The day. main thing too is if you're ambiently fermenting these, just. You want them to go through the same journey. Issues, yes. So. <laughs> journey, I said issues, you know, optimist and the pessimist. Yes. All right. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel because we do this kind of thing every single week for John and Mike. Brew-dudes.com. Brew on. Cheers.